Well guys, today I have a story time for you, and it's one that just recently happened. So on Monday, I went and saw Letters from the Fire, Stitched Apart, Palisades, and Lacey Sturm in concert at the Concourse here in Knoxville. And it was freaking awesome. Now I'm going to go into detail about it because it really was quite possibly the best concert I've ever been to. I'll make another video for uh, another story time talking about the other candidate for the best concert I've ever been to. And if you guys want to see that, tell me in the comments down below. It was the day that I saw Sick Puppies and Skillet in the same night. Crazy. But that's not what this story is about. This story is about what happened Monday. And it was absolutely nuts how I even got to go to this thing. So I knew about two months prior to when she came to town that she was coming because that's when she announced her tour. And I was super, super excited about it. And I hit some friends up that I knew was into this type of music. And they said that they would just have to see. I mean, obviously, they don't know if they're going to be able to go. It's two months into the future. We didn't know at the time. But Monday comes around, and they can't go. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to have to go to this concert alone? Nope. My mom comes to the rescue. So yeah, my mother took me to see Letters from the Fire, Stitched Apart, Palisades, and Lacey Sturm in the same night. You the real MVP. It was fun. It was fun for me and her to go to a concert together and to have that kind of bonding moment. So it was great. So when we got there, Letters from the Fire was just finishing their set because we thought it started at 8, and it actually started at 7, so we were late getting there, of course. But I got to see the last couple of songs from Letters from the Fire, and they were really good. Then Stitched Up Heart came on the stage, and oh my gosh, they freaking killed it. All of them had so much energy, and they were just so electric, and you know, Mixie was up there doing her thing, killing the stage owning it. It was awesome. And then guess what? They say that they're going to be meeting people at their merch desk. So guess what I do? I take my fat booty over to the merch table to meet them. And they were super cool people. Mixie is one of the sweetest people I think I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. When it came time for us to do the group picture of me and Sisha Part in the same picture together, I thought I was going to be the only one in the picture. But nope, Mixie saw my mom standing over on up against a pillar, I think it was. And she said, Hey, you gotta come over here. You gotta get in here. So yeah. My mother and me got a picture with Stitch Up Heart. Don't believe me? Here it is. But they were super cool people, and their set was absolutely fire, and it was great. Then Palisades went up and performed. And honestly, I didn't get a whole lot of uh, time to listen to Palisades before we went and saw them that night. But I was, as soon as they stepped up there and started their thing, I was sold. I was sold on their music. They had so much energy as well. Lou was giving it his all up there screaming and singing and all that stuff and it was super cool to see they're a really tight band and i was sold from that point on and i bought their album i've been listening to it and they're a really good band and i got to meet lou as well he came to the merch desk and wanted to meet people so i got to meet lou and he's a super cool guy and you could also see his passion for music and it's not just music to him it's not like these pop artists out there that just make music for the money bands like these that i went and saw this night are in it for the music, and they're in it for the lyrics, and they have a message that they want to get across, and they are super passionate about it. And that's what I love the most about the rock community, the metal community, is that it's real. And bands like Letters from the Fire, Sister Apart, Palisades, and Lacey Sturm absolutely made that apparent. So after I met Lou, then came the moment I'd been waiting for for a long time. Lacey Sturm stepped on the stage, and from that moment on, I was mesmerized. I started listening to Flyleaf in 2005, which was a year after my step-grandfather passed away. And me and him were super close. He was the closest grandfather that I had because my mother's father lives four and a half hours, five hours away in Virginia in the middle of nowhere, and we don't get to see him that often. My dad's dad passed away like seven months or so after I was born because he had dementia, and he was just up in age. He was well over 90. And so he was the closest grandfather figure that I had because I would spend weekends at their house. I would hang out with them all the time. My grandmother would pick me up from school and take me to their house. And it was so much fun. He was a great person. But he passed away in 2004 due to a pneumonia and a lung infection that he got as a result from being a smoker for so many years. Now, when I was alive and knew him, he wasn't smoking. But, you know, smoking does cause effects down the line, people. I mean... My step-grandfather was proof of that, and so many other people that I know in my life have been living proof of that, which is why I don't do it. But I was really bitter in that year that I was trying to get over his loss. I was trying to mourn it and move on, 
but it wasn't easy for an eight-year-old kid to, you know, move on after the loss of their step-grandfather. And then I found Flyleaf's first album, and I was blown away. I was nine years old when I heard it, and it came out not too long after my birthday, actually, in October. A friend of mine told me about them at school, and ever since then, I was sold. They really did help me get through a lot of the uh, anger that I was dealing with, and their style of music was one that I was really drawn to because it was angry, it was in your face, and, you know, it was great. If you guys want to know what my 3rd, 4th, and 5th grade iPod consisted of, it was Flyleaf, Skillet, Michael Jackson, and the All-American Rejects. I had some other stuff in there too, but that was what it mostly was. So I've been a fan of Lacey Sturm ever since the beginning, and it's, you know, her music has really helped me out through a lot. And I, I missed the opportunity to see her with Flyleaf when they came to Knoxville a few times for circumstances beyond my control. And I had to take this opportunity and go and see her. And Lacey absolutely owned the stage. She was up there. She was not performing. She was like worshiping. And it's great seeing that as a Christian, as a Christian brother. And it just really was awesome to see her lose herself in her message and in the story of her songs and, you know, really relaying that message to the fans and, you know, it was so honest, and it was so, like, it didn't really feel like a concert. It felt like a worship service, really, and that was what was so cool about it. So after she finished her setup and she went off stage, I wasn't expecting her to meet everybody because, you know, she's the headliner, you know, people probably, you know, would flock to see her and all that stuff, and she didn't mention about, you know, meeting people, which I thought, well, if she was going to meet us, she would say something. But, here's what's cool. Her husband Josh was up there getting some of the guitars off the stage and whatever. And I saw some people talking to him. So I went up there and I was able to get a picture with him. And I asked him, I said, do you know if Lacey's going to be coming out here and meeting people? And he said, yeah, I think she's going to. She's just kind of taking a minute to gather herself after the show. And at that moment, I almost exploded in a burst of fireworks. But I controlled myself so that I wouldn't look like a freak in front of her husband. So I went back and I told him, I was like, she's going to come. She's going to meet us. And we have to get something to autograph because I didn't bring anything. I didn't know that she was going to be meeting people. So I didn't bring anything to have her sign. So I was like, we got to get a couple of things. We got a t-shirt and we got the album. And then, of course, somebody says, all right, anybody who wants to meet Lacey, line up over here. By the time he said line up, I was in line. And when I went up there and I met her, it was the most amazing experience ever. When I tell you all that this woman pours out the love of God. She really does. She does it when she sings, when she screams, and when she's talking to you, when she hugs you, when she looks at you. She gave me the most genuine look of, I feel for you, I care about you. She gave me the most genuine feeling out of anybody that I've looked up to as far as music is concerned. And it was amazing. What I told her was, is I, I told her how her song Rot really helped me out through the aftermath of my relationship that I went through at, you know, about a year or two beforehand. And I don't remember if I ever made a video about my abusive relationship. And I say abusive kind of loosely because it wasn't the worst it could have been, but it definitely took a toll for the worst. And it did get verbally abusive on both sides. I'm not going to sit here and look perfect, but it did get pretty bad. And when we broke up, it was hard for me to deal with it. I got really, really depressed. I got really super self-conscious. My anxiety got worse. And I had felt a feeling of loneliness like I hadn't felt in a really long time. And I don't like feeling alone. I, I don't like that feeling. I know what it feels like to feel alone. And it's because I've had people, so many people throughout my life, stab me in the back. And instead of, you know, ignoring the rumors about their friend, they joined in on them and laughed at me. And it's, it's something that I don't wish on anybody, for you know, to be totally honest. And I was really having a, a difficult time dealing with, you know, being alone again, being single. And it was until I heard the song Rot that I was feeling those things. When I heard Rot, it just really gave me the words that I wanted to say. There's a line in the song that I really have, for a while, wanted to get tattooed on me. And it says, Deliverance is mine. And that's what I was not feeling, was deliverance. And it was until I heard that line, it just clicked. That I had the opportunity to accept the deliverance that the Lord was giving me. Because now I was, you know, not having to deal with arguments. I wasn't dealing with a lot of stress. I wasn't dealing with 
having to choose between two sides all the time. And it, I was feeling a deliverance, you know, but I just wasn't accepting it because I was too caught up in my own depression and my own self-consciousness and my own loneliness that I didn't allow myself to feel that way. And it was when I heard that line in that song that everything started to make sense for me. And I decided at that point that I was going to choose to listen to the Lord, to feel the deliverance, to feel the freedom that I had after being you know, so wrapped up in a volatile relationship. And when I was telling her this, you know, like I said, she looked at me with the most genuine eyes, the most loving eyes, and it was like, I mean, she didn't know I existed until that moment, but she looked at me like I was a dear friend that had just went through something. And it was so, it was so cool. I mean, it really is. It's hard for me to talk about it and not, you know, get a little emotional and tongue-tied about it because, you know, I never... It's been a long time since I felt, you know, like somebody really cared about me in that way, and she did. I mean, she really was interested in what I had to say, and it was, it was awesome. I'm, I'm super thankful for it. But here's the picture that I took with her, and she signed the shirt and the album, and what's really cool about when she signed the shirt was she did not know that that line, Deliverance is Mine, meant so much to me. She didn't know. I didn't get a chance to tell her, but... She wrote it on the shirt. See, it's right here. I don't know if you guys can see it very well. I might hold it up here. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see it very well. I can't tell. But yeah, it says Deliverance is mine. And I, like I said, I didn't mention it to her. I didn't mention that it helped me out a lot. It made, it made things click with me. But when she wrote that down on the shirt, I mean, the only thing I could do was just, was just stand there and look and, and say thank you. Because the words that I wanted to say to her weren't coming out because I was so overcome with the emotion of, wow, this is a God thing. And that's something that she said when she was on stage. Everybody who was at that show is there for a reason. And I believe that the reason that I was there was to kind of make everything full circle for me. That all of the time that I had been dealing with <clears throat> depression and loneliness, self-consciousness, anxiety, it's not worthless it's not meaningless because there are people who have experienced it that are out there people like Lacey and they care and that's something that really struck me and it was the best experience that I could have ever asked for at a concert and I left there with so many emotions going through my head mostly happiness though and it just it was a god thing I just know it was and you know she is just She's incredible. She's an incredible person. And if you guys ever have a chance to meet her, you need to take it. Because <laughs> I I seriously... It's still hard for me to believe that it happened, honestly. So yeah, I mean, that's my story. Meeting Lacey Sturm and seeing Stitched Up Our Palisades and Letters from the Fire in concert. As well as Lacey in concert. If you guys want to hear the other story of me going to see Sick Puppies and Skillet live... That's a pretty crazy story, so if you guys want to hear it, then let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like this video and share it with any Flyleaf fans, Lacey fans, Palisades fans, Sister of Hearts fans, Letters from the Fire fans, you know, just with anybody. If you want to follow me on my social medias, the names are up here at the top and the links are in the description down below. If you want to see the last video I made, there's an annotation over here and the link for that is in the description box down below as well. And I'll put a link to Lacey's music video for her song Rot in the description as well so you guys can go and hear the song. And if this is the first video you are ever seeing of me, then please hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next one.